All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another webinar on Lightroom. So, um, as always, while we're just waiting for everybody to join in, I'm opening the Q&A tabs and I'm opening the chat tabs. And that's where you can interact with me during this whole process. Any questions that you have? Hey, Louis, how's it, Marie, Sally, Tracy? Hey, guys. So, the moment that you have a question, pop it in the Q&A for me. Hey, good morning, Nick from the US. Um, the moment you have a question, pop it into the Q&A block. And I will then uh, answer those either if they're relevant at the moment when I'm talking, I will answer it then, or we'll just bounce them all to the end. Right. Um, Shazmin, hey, how's it going? So hi to Mo and to Gibbs. Uh, when does registration for the Wednesday webinar open? Okay. So um, I see people are still slowly joining in here. So for now, let's do this. At the end of this session, I'm going to share with you the details of the first of our kind of premium webinars which we're gonna be doing. I'm doing the first one next week on Wednesday. I think it's the 29th, is it the 29th? Um, I will be doing that. And the first one is, it's called the Ultimate Monochrome Workflow. It's an hour and a half webinar with half an hour Q&A. The following week, Marlon is doing one called Seeing in Monochrome, right? And the week after that, Andrew will be doing a, I think it's called Sunset, Sunsets, Sunrise and Silhouettes in which he takes what to look for, how to shoot it, and how to process it. This is going to be something called Webinar Wednesdays that we're launching as of next week. Now, that is not going to take away from any of the other ones. All the guys will still be doing all of the webinars all the time, right? And we're going to have the free webinars, and then these ones, the ones I mentioned now from next Wednesday, is chargeable. It's going to be $2,500 per, no, I'm joking. It's only $15 or $20 a session. It's a two-hour webinar, but there's a lot of value add. You get the files to play along with, these PDFs and stuff like that. So at the end of this session, I'm going to share with you guys first the details for the one for next week, Wednesday. And it'll happen every Wednesday from then on. Basically, even when this Corona thing's finished, we're going to keep going with this. Um, I'm also going to be loading a bunch of other um, webinars from the guys. We've got some great stuff coming up. Uh, Marlon's getting involved. Andrew's getting involved. Uh, I'm going to load some new ones for next week. So there's a lot coming your way. So I'll ask, answer two more questions here quickly um that you guys have asked before we get stuck into this uh number one where can you sign up for those that i've just mentioned i will share the details of my session with you at the end of this before i say goodbye and i'll share the url with you so you guys can then go and pre-book we're only releasing it uh on friday evening we're sending out a newsletter tomorrow and then we're going to social so you guys can have the first crack at it if you are keen to join me next wednesday um and then you guys will also receive a newsletter with all the details tomorrow, but I'm going to give you a head start after this. Then Elaine asks, when will the webinar from yesterday be available? Okay. So every single webinar that we've done, myself, Mike, Andrew, the whole bunch, right? We have started to put them together. They are being loaded to YouTube as we speak. On Monday morning, we're going to release a playlist on the Wild Eye YouTube channel with all of those web, uh, webinars, right? Literally as recorded as it is. So they're all going to go on there. The, the paid ones, the $20, $15 ones, that we, the two-hour kind of premium ones, they will not be going onto YouTube. But if any of the people who signed up requested, I can send it to them. But all the free ones will be going onto YouTube and Instagram TV from Monday next week. Right. Okay, let's get into this. We are talking today about the adjustment brush in Lightroom. Now, let me do this again. I've done this every single time with you. On a score of 1 to 10, 10 being... I know how to use that brush. You can tell me nothing. One being what brush? Go. One to 10. Where are you guys currently with the adjustment brush? Okay. We're averaging this at about a, looks like a five, maybe a four somewhere. Okay. Um, try it. Epic fail. <laughs> okay. Maybe a four or five. Average is about a five or a six. Okay. Now, I am going to try and show you as much about the brush in Lightroom as possible in 45 minutes. If it was a course, I would go two and a half, three hours. That's how deep I can go on, um, on this brush. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to quickly take you to Lightroom. I'm going to run you through where to find the brush. I just wanted to basics. Come here and then we're going to go dig in, dig into it. Right. Here we go. So. We're in Lightroom now, and I've chosen a couple of images that we're going to play with um, for different reasons with the brush. But uh, 
I want to start just on this one here, this elephant image. Now, it is not an amazing image, right? It's a silhouette. It's raw. It's unshot as it is. Now, as it stands now, you guys should know that the basic panel effects, either all of these, right? Those are all global adjustments. So if I do something in the basic panel, it affects the entire image, right? Top to bottom, corner to corner. It does everything. Every single one of these sliders does that. Every one of these does that. It's global. Now, the moment you come up to here, these are your special adjustments in Lightroom. This is crop. This is clone and heal tool. This is red eye removal. You can also do pet, pet eye removal or something like that. Um, this is the graduated filter and the radial filter. Tomorrow evening, Andrew Danquist is running a session on these two, right? So a lot of crossover with what I'm doing here. But this thing here is the adjustment brush. Now, notice this for me quickly. When I open the basic panel, I have a whole series of sliders. Just have a quick squeeze there and remember them, right? Look at uh, detail. Look at some of these. Okay, close that. If I open the adjustment brush, it gives me a whole new set of sliders, but they mimic the ones that we have at the bottom. Okay, again, open the adjustment brush. You have a whole set of sliders here that will apply only to where I brush. Now, we'll work through this slowly now. A couple of little random things for you before we get stuck in. Let's say, for example, I've had a brush that's done that. Not that I know why you would want to, but if you did, right? If you then want to come and reset this, you can either double click on each one or you just double click on the word effect and it takes them all back to zero. It's little things like that that makes our life easier, don't you think? So that's the first one. Mm. I'm going to show you towards the end of the session how you can over here save yourself. I've got Jerry Sharp. It's a sharpening brush. So at the end of a, an image, I can brush over certain areas and it just pulls the detail out of that. I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can put more than one brush. We can delete brushes, but we'll get to that as we go. So these sliders, right? If I paint in short term, I'm going to click on the brush. I'm just going to do, let's just do, for example, something we can dramatically to see here. I can do that. Right. Forget what you, you didn't see the red. You didn't see the red. Okay. So I can do that. Whatever I choose here will happen where I brush. It's as simple as that. So if I do 100% saturation um, on this area that I've brushed now, you can see it only affects the area where I brushed. All right. So that's the pretty simple thing. And we're going to look at how we can use this. Now, the most important thing down here that we need is you can create two brushes at a time. You can have a big one and a small one that you can work. This is much of a muchness, right? But, and this is where I need you to pay attention for one second. Size of brush. So if I leave my brush there, if you have a mouse, easy, up and down. You can also take two fingers up and down on your trackpad if you're on a Mac, right? Or you can come over here and then move the size slider to change the size of your brush. Feathering. Now, I'll talk about feathering in a second, but what I want you to watch is if you look at my brush, there's a thick circle and there's the thin circle on the outside, right? The feather changes the distance between them, watch. Okay, so if you do not know what feathering is, this is the short version. I'm gonna overdo this adjustment, right? Let me delete that brush, we'll get to all of this. If I have zero feather, nothing, and I draw a line. Ah, oh, man, all my sliders are all over the place. Let's try that again. Okay, it's a very definite line. What feathering does, watch what happens to my brush, is it it moves the edge away. So now if I do the same thing, the middle is still the same amount of adjustment, but it fades out all the way to the outside of that feather. So it softens the brush up a bit. Make sense? For me, I like to sit around about a 50-ish in general, but it is very image and um, area specific. Now, another little thing to look at quickly here is if I'm going to create a brush, right? I'm going to say this side and I draw there, and I draw there, and I draw here. Okay, do you see this little dot thingy over here? If I hold my mouse on that, and I just hold it there, the areas turn red. It shows me, that is a mask that shows me where I have brushed. Because sometimes your adjustment is so subtle, you don't know where you've actually brushed. Okay, what that also means is, if I do any adjustment here now, it will apply to all three of those areas, even if they do not touch each other. Got it? Now, 
if you want to do something else and do another brush on a image, what you do is you'd go up here, you would click new, and now I can draw another one and another one and another one. So now I've got that dot there and this dot here. If I hold my mouse on this dot, it shows me those areas. If I hold my mouse on that dot, it shows me that areas. The active brush, if you want to change something, is the one with the black dot in the middle. So far, so good. So if I want to change these three, I would click on that one, and then I would do stuff, right? Let's just do something dramatic, like there. If I want to change these, I'll click there, and then I will do adjustments over there. You can add as many brushes onto an image as you want. To delete a brush, simply click on it once and hit delete. Boom, gone, and it removes all of that brush work. Same thing here, click on it, delete, it's gone. Okay, double click on effect. So you understand your size, you understand feather, you understand all of that. Okay, I need for you guys quickly in the chat, confirm for me that what I've done so far wasn't too fast and that you kind of get it. Just give me a yes or a no, it's important. Because from here, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Gonna go a little bit deeper than that. All right, it looks like it's mostly yeses. Looks like it's mostly yeses. All right, so, all okay. Now, the biggest thing, and I mentioned this in one of the previous webinars, the biggest and most important thing for me about the adjustment brush is flow and density. Now, I've done standalone videos on this. Mm. Um, I will do multiple brushes. Can you go over multiple brushes at once? I'll do that again. Um, the most important thing is you need to understand these two sliders because that's where the real power of the brush comes in. Now, before I go there, if, for example, right, if, for example, a artist, an, an, an artist is going to paint something, right? He's not going to just go 100% bang, 100% bang, and make all these strokes, right? You fade it in. So if you're going to shade in, if you're doing coloring book, it's locked down. I'm sure you've got a coloring book at home, right? You're not going to go, ah, and it's just all there. You're going to slowly fade it in until you get to the amount of adjustment that you want. Yes, that is what you can do with flow and density. And that is one of the most important things about the brush that so many people don't actually even get. So flow and density, if you're going to listen to just a little bit of this podcast and leave, that's fine. It needs to be this next bit that's coming up. Flow and density. Here we go. So back into Lightroom. Now, there's my main image. Okay, forget about that. I'm just using this as an example because it gives me a lot of work. Flow and density, right. Both are 100%. Now, the easiest way, I'm going to start with density. Density refers to Think of this as a percentage. How much of whatever I do here will be applied to the image? For, for example, it doesn't matter. I go up 100%. If this is on 100, my density, and I draw a line there, right? It applies 100% of that. If this is down here to 59, and I do the same thing, okay, can you see? It only applies six or 59% in this case of the adjustment. So it's almost like a governor in a vehicle or a buffer. It stops the adjustment. Now, normally you would want this at 100, right? But I normally keep this at 90. It just softens it up for me a little bit. So now if I've, I've changed nothing else, if I draw another line, I'm expecting it to be darker than this one, but lighter than that one, because it's now 90% of the adjustment here. Watch, got it? Okay, so density is like a buffer or a governor for a vehicle that it stops you from going over. It stops you from getting to 100%. Important, please tell me. Yes, we got that. Density slider manages how much of the, any adjustments and all the adjustments at the top you are applying. Okay, that's important. It's important. Right. So, let me just quick here. Uh, not there, that's cool. All right, so now flow. Flow is where the magic is going to happen. So now... I've got these three brushes, right? It's the active one. I click on it and I hit delete or backspace. It's gone. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave this exposure. The only reason I'm putting this on exposure for, guys, is it's the easiest way of me to show you if there's anything happening. Right. So, we're going to leave 
identity on a hundred for now. Flow, and this is important. Okay, flow means that with every stroke, X amount of the adjustment is applied. This is how much of it, it stops it at, at a certain point. This is how much. So if my flow is on 100 and I draw a single line here, boom, that's what I get. Okay, it's 100% of whatever I do here. If I drop my flow to 75, it means that only 75% of the adjustment, if I do one line, will be done at the first moment. But here's the goal. I can go over it again and again until I get to 100 or to where I've set my density. Again, if I set this to 50, right, and I draw one single line, it's half faded. But like an artist, you can now go over and paint in until you get to 100. One more time, if I go to 25, 25%, single stroke, is that. Two, three, I'm building it up to 50%. Keep going, I'm building it up to 75. Keep going, I get to 100. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because, think about this now. And we're gonna talk about the auto mask in a second. Auto mask is an amazing feature, but I almost never use it. Okay, because if you, for example, look at this, no, and let's pick something solid. If you look at my phone, right, the light that's falling on it doesn't just stop and start, right? So if I do this, the shadow changes all the time. Light falls in fluid ways. So when you're doing the flow, if you're going to paint, something's face like a lion in a, under, under a tree or something and you can paint right more on the outside and less on the inside you're actually fading that adjustment over the image right the difference between flow and density okay we can do that again i'm going to do these again a couple of times right any questions i'm just checking in here two, 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 two. okay keep the questions coming uh i will answer some of those now right I'm gonna do the discuss density and flow one more time, right? So I'm gonna discuss density and flow for you guys one more time, just so that you can be 100% sure of what we're doing. So, share, click that one, delete, no brushes. Okay, again, I can do anything up here. Let me do 100% exposure or four times exposure. I'll push my saturation all the way to the top and let's just do the haze well. Forget about, this is not important. I'm just doing it so that it's visual, right? Dehaze messes it up. Nice, Jerry. Oh, that's because of this, right? So whatever you decide to do here, it's going to do one off. Now, density buffers. Think of density as percentage. How much of this percentage, what you do here, will be applied? Currently, 100%. Currently, 49%. And then on this one, 25 ballpark percent. Okay, that's it. So this percentage is how much of whatever you do here is applied. Density. You should be able to keep density at about a 90. You can keep it at 100, not a problem. I just prefer to be at 90 because it makes my work look a little bit more natural. Okay, I'm going to take those three away. Now, flow. Flow means that with every stroke, how much of basically all the adjustments and this is applied. So at 100 and a single stroke, 91% of whatever I've done here is applied in one stroke, right? If I take my flow now down to 50%, it means that 50% of whatever I do here and that I've buffered here will happen in one stroke. So one stroke. Got it? But now, if I keep on going over this again and again and again, it will eventually get to 91%. Watch. Paint, 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 paint. Done. So I've now reached 91% of whatever I've done here. If I move this up to 100, this doesn't change after the fact. Right? This does not change after the fact. This should do before you brush. Any of these at the top, you can change after the fact. Okay, let's do flow one more time. If I take flow to 25, okay, and I buffer this to 80, means 
none of the adjustments here that I do will go more than 80%. Okay. And now flow means that 25% of a stroke. So there's one stroke. It's only 25% of that. If I keep going over it, I'm building it up to 50%, 75 until I get to the point where it's up to 80% of what I've done here. How confused are we? <laughs> How confused are we right now? Okay. Are you guys happy? Not confused, not good, clear. Okay, this is important. The flow and the density slider is the magic in Lightroom. And when we start processing now with it, so um, what we can do is I would personally set this to about 90% of my maximum. I keep it there. And flow, funny enough, I normally start on 25. So I am 25 on flow and 90 on density almost always. Because why? I can then just keep on going over and over and over until I see the adjustment, what I want. Okay. Um, I'm just looking through your questions if there's anything interesting now. Um, what things you can do? Okay, there's nothing there right now. So let me quickly take you back to Lightroom and we're going to dig just a little bit deeper. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to delete this one and I will set the flow here to 25. This is my normal working kind of range, right? 25 and 90. That works for me. Okay, before we now go on, guys, I'm seeing your questions. We will get there, right? Before I go on, this is an important one, auto mask. Um, by way of the chat quickly, uh, if I can just pull my chat up here. How many of you use auto mask while you are using the brush, please? Yes or no? Do you use the auto mask function? All right. Uh, I've got one. Yes, I've got some no's. No, no, no. Sometimes I never use it much. Only on a race. Good answer. Okay. Now, not usually good. Good, good, good. And I'm going to show you why. Because we want detail. Right. Let's quickly just discuss what this thing does. Auto mask. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to delete this. Important thing now, which I haven't done with you yet, is if you're using a brush, I normally do not use a mask when I'm working with the brush. So for example, if I wanted to do this, right, these adjustments here, and I, and I do stuff, right, I want to see my adjustment develop. And when we, when we get to the Lima later on, you paint the adjustment in and you can visually see it getting sharper and brighter. Okay, so I don't use a mask. However, watch this. A lot of people prefer this. I'm gonna zero all of my adjustments. And now I'm gonna put a brush on here. At this point, I am going to hit O on the keyboard. Where I want you to look is look at the bottom left of my screen here. Show selected mask overlay. If you can just click there or your shortcut key is O, right? It turns it on. What that does is when I now paint, it shows me red. That's the mask. Okay. Flow and density still apply here. Watch if I max them out and I do another thing here. So what I'm doing now, I'm not painting red on the image. I'm not painting red on the image. I am now painting. And I know that once I've finished painting, for example, if I do any adjustments, it will be applied to the red areas because that's where I painted, right? Um, and if I had my flow on, like there, for example, it will be applied less. Now, I prefer not to use this personally, and I'll show you in a little bit why, but that is the function. However, if I undo this, right, I'm gonna use this example here to show you what auto mask does. Now, with auto mask off, I'm going to max out my flow and my density because it's more visual. So you'll understand. Right. If I now, for example, want to paint this elephant and the, and the foreground, right? I want to paint that so that I can work there. Uh, sorry, Shazmin, I'm seeing your message. Mine has always been ticked. Exactly. Take it off. You'll see why. Except for auto mask, right? So if I want to paint the elephant and his foreground, if I do not have auto mask on, I'm going to have to get a very fine feather and work very, very carefully to not kind of, you know, go over the line. I'll show you how to erase later. Okay. Same with the elephant. If I want to just paint the elephant and people take hours to do this, they'll take a smaller brush and then they'll paint the elephant and stuff. It is painful, right? It is painful. So if I do that, now I open up my brush like that. I turn auto mask on. Now this is important. 
you have the plus sign in the middle of your brush and you've got the circle on the outside. Okay. If the plus sign is in the shadow area, the dark black, it will favor that and that's what it's going to try and paint. It's then going to try and stick to that color tone. Okay. So watch again. I'm going to just do from here. Actually, let me do it without auto mask as an example. I'm going to go from here, there and up, keeping the plus in the dark and then stopping there. So just this, right? Without auto mask on, but with a mask. So see, so if I keep the plus on, it does that. It just paints. Delete. If I turn auto mask on and I do the same thing, watch now. That is auto mask. Okay, so auto mask finds edges. Now, it is a great tool. It's a really, really good tool. However, that is very useful if you're doing architecture photography or if you're taking pictures of very linear. So if you were to photograph this bookcase behind me and you wanted to try and mask in, then it makes sense because there's definite lines. When in nature, except for maybe a silhouette shot like that, that could, that's my, my exception, is there ever a straight line? I see people trying to auto mask lions, but there's fur. So then when you do that, and I can show it to you now, when you do that and you add the adjustment, it starts looking funny and fuzzy and horrible on the edges because there's different textures of fur, but I'll show you the example. Okay, so one more question for you guys. Please confirm for me you are happy with what a mask is on the brush, i.e. put that red on to see where you paint, as well as auto mask. Are we good for that? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay, so far we are so good. Right. I'm going to take you now back into Lightroom and just show you one more trick. Here's a little, here's a little one for you. Um, if I can remember this, I just thought of this now. So you can now do this, right? So if I'm going to paint this foreground, I've still got an auto mask on. So I would do that, for example. Now see it blur, blurs over a bit here, kind of do that. If this happens, you see how it's gone over, yeah? You can hold Option or Alt and watch what happens to your brush. It turns to an eraser, okay? And then I can come and I can erase certain areas. So holding Alt or Option on a Mac turns your brush into an eraser. Okay, that is a really, really cool thing. Okay, um, the other thing was, how many of you have done that before? So you can change the color of your mask. That is completely, completely useless information because it does nothing. Uh, it just kind of looks cool. So if you, um, if, so you don't like the red masking because you can see the adjustments in real time. Yes, Amy, yes. So I never use these, the masks, unless it's an image like this, which has super crisp lines, but you'll see now with the other things, I like to see my adjustments get faded in. Not the mask, the actual adjustments, but I'll show you now. If you want to change the color of your mask, like I've done here, you hit Shift O. Shift O. So red is the normal color. So if I paint here as well, right? You hold Shift and O and you can go green, gray, or black. So red is normal, green, you should do green because it's wild eye and it's nice. Okay, but Shift O changes the color of your mask if that's a thing for you. Okay, so now let me take you, uh, not from there, let's go back. Sorry, you didn't see me now. I'm taking you back to Lightroom. Um, I'm now going to take you to let us go to this guy. Okay. It's an injury in Madagascar. They are ridiculously cute. Um, they make a hell of a good photographic subject. And um, let me open your chat here just so I can stay in touch with you guys. Uh, how about on a PC? It should also be shift uh, and O to change the, the mask. Okay. So in an instance like this, let me go up to this level here. Um, I'm going to, uh, is this a raw file? Have I changed? Okay, so this is my process file, but I will enclose this and open the mask, uh, open the brush. Zero. Auto mask is still on. So for the purposes of what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to leave auto mask on as well as um, my mask mask, the red. Okay. I've seen people to try and do a mask by trying to edge this thing with a mask and using auto mask. Let me show you what happens, right? So my flow's on 100, my density's on 100, auto mask. So this is gonna try and find the edges like it did with the elephant. 
let's try and do it on this guy if I wanted to paint him. So remember, the plus has to stay on the actual animal. And then I would go, and I'm trying to find the edges here, uh, coming around. Okay, so let me do the air as well. Okay, if I now zoom in, and for those of you that don't know, if you're in your brush or radial filter or graduated, if you hold space bar while you're in it, you get your zoom function. So if you hold space bar, you get the zoom function, right? So for now, let's go deeper in here. Watch what happens here. Can you see what happens on the edges of the fur? It is not crisp. It sometimes jumps out. So yes, I could go and I can try and erase it. That is just a ball ache, right? It is not fun to do that. So if I look here, um, on this side here, see how it struggles with fur. Now, the problem for us though is that we very often obviously photograph things with fur. Lions, leopards, if you're lucky enough. Um, so you get all of those kind of things. But the auto mask doesn't help because it edges it. And then it looks shitty like this. Okay, so the reason that I like to not use auto mask and use flow and density is the following. Let me take this brush away, minimize that. I'm gonna take you back here. Okay, there's a brush, we delete it there. So I decide up front what I want to do. For now, I'm gonna work on the background. So I'm gonna work the background area, right? Then I'm going to work, for example, uh, the animal's body and then the animal's face and maybe the eyes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have to stop here for a second. I'm sure we follow each other on Instagram, right? All of us. Now, so you don't have to go. Really so this is something you're gonna see often now that you've known how to work the brush. Watch this. And people love this with leopards and lions. They do this. They take a brush and they do this and they do this and then they do this. Okay, so I've got my mask on, remember? I'm just doing it rough. Take that away. And they do weird things with these animals, right? You're gonna see this. You're gonna see them. Watch the leopards and the lions on Instagram. People love doing this. It is shocking. Please do not do that, ever, ever. Okay, because the reason is again, if you, if someone can look at your image and think, hey, Amy, you painted, Claire, you painted, Marcus, you painted the animal's eyes so I can see what you've done, you fail. We should not be able to see it, so it's subtle. If you use the auto mask on animals, you can also sometimes see it. If you zoom in on Instagram, if you go on Instagram and you zoom in, you can often see the edges are not great, right? So that's why I prefer flow and I'll paint my adjustments in like an artist, but I'll show you that now. Your animal, let's go back, should not, not look like he has, ooh, undo there, should not look like he swallowed plutonium. That's bad. That is a sick, sick animal you are looking at now. Okay, so let's get real. Let's get rid of that because that is much better. You can do the eyes. You can absolutely do the eyes, right? But not like that, please, ever. Okay, so. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a brush on the background, I'm gonna put a brush on his body, and I'm gonna put a brush on his face and possibly his eyes, okay? But it's not gonna look like that. So I come back to, I will say, for example, I decide up front, and this is important for you then to know what these sliders do, right? So if it's, a, I'm gonna, on the background, and this is in the webinar next week, where I'm gonna talk about moving tones forward and back, taking, darks, pushing them back, pulling lights forward, because visually we as human beings are attracted visually to three things. It's called visual mass. The first is sharp areas. The second is dark and light areas, the contrast. And the third is saturated areas. So you should be thinking for yourself, right? If I want to push something back in the frame, I'm going to make it a little bit darker, a little less saturated, and a little less sharp. Now that's, that's obviously oversimplifying the whole process right? Then the, on the opposite side, if you want to pull something forward, you're going to make it a little bit brighter. You're going to make it a little bit, wait, brighter, more saturated and sharper. Okay. So I'm then going to go 
and I'm going to do for the background. I'm thinking cool. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bit, let's go darker. And I'm not going to worry about this number because I am using 25 flow. Right. So there, uh, what else do we say? I'm going to maybe drop the saturation a little bit and I'm going to make it a little less sharp. Okay. You can do clarity and stuff as well, but that's a different thing. Now I go and remember I'm on 25 flow here. So if I just go once here, for example, and there versus going over and over again. So if I then paint, the more I paint, the more my adjustment gets blended in. And that's what I like. Right, so I've painted here so I can see. Okay, that's pretty cool. If you want to turn your brush on and off, right, you can come down here without brush, with brush, without brush, with brush. Okay, now I'm going to take my second, uh, what's it called, brush. I'm going to click on new. I'm going to reset all of them. Remember, the easy one answer is to double click here. And then I'm going to start. Okay, on the body, what do I want? I want to bring some of the texture out. Um, I want to not make it much darker. So maybe some clarity, which is edge contrast, and maybe a little bit of sharpness. So I'm going to go clarity up. And again, I'm not worried here. I can go max because I'm fading it in. It's not a one-off adjustment, right? So let's go there. I'm going to make it a little bit more sharper. Just for us, for the purposes of this right now, let me go and add a little bit of exposure as well. Okay. So I'm going to do this area here. Let me feather it just a touch. So I do this. So the more I go, the more it happens, right? Again, easy, come back here. So when I turn this off, it turns both brushes that I have on and off. So there's without, there's with, there's without, there's with. Okay, I'm gonna add a third brush. So I go to new. This time I'm gonna do the face, which is the visual area that I wanna draw my attention to. So new brush, double click on effect so that it zeroes all of this, right? And then I'm going to just paint the face over like this. So what do we want to do with the face? I want to make it sharper for sure, right? A little bit there. Texture, yes. Clarity, yes. Maybe saturation, yes. Okay. Now I'm going to go quite a big brush and I'm just going to do this. Okay. You couldn't see much happen there, but watch when I turn all three of my brushes on and off now. Without and with. Without and with. But but, 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 here is the gold. This is the gold. You now have three areas of your image. I've got background, I've got body and face that you can manipulate individually depending on what you wanna see visually. You need to think, this is how it works. You're now managing that image like a puzzle piece, yeah? So, I'm gonna take you back in here, there, and now, so, if, let me just keep going on this one, right? If I am now going to hold my cursor over, here's the first dot here. Hold it there. It shows me that's where I painted. Okay. I'm not phased that I didn't cover all of the background because you can't see it if I take it off. Because flow makes it flow. Light is fluid. Light doesn't fall on me. If I put a shadow on my face, right? Put a shadow on my face. It doesn't just, it's not hard. There's certain elements to light. So if I now decide, I hold it there for you to see that's the background. If I now want to do something to the background, I can say, cool, let me manipulate just that area by doing whatever else it is I want to do with it, All right? So let's make it a bit darker. Let's drop the clarity with smooth it out a bit. And you know what? Just for shits and giggles, let's make it greener because it's quite nice. Okay. Then I come to this one. I put my mouse on it. I hold. Okay. That's the body. So anything I do now, if I click on that and the black dot comes into the middle, it becomes the active brush, right? And then... I can now decide, cool, what do I want to do with that area? Do I want to show more? Do I want to show less? Do I want to add texture? Ooh, hello. So then you've got that. Now on the face, I can click on the face and say, cool, what do I want to do here? Is do I want to make the face a bit darker so it blends? Do I want to, want to lift it up? No, because then he already looks like he's had a fucking fright of his life. <laughs> so let's not do that. Um, but I might want to add some clarity to the face because I want it sharper, some saturation. Um, so... Overall, um, we just quickly scroll down here. If we leave density in 90, always oh, that okay? Shaz music, yes, 100%. Absolutely, 100%. Um, so I just got it in 100 for now. If you now want to fine tune, I would hold space bar, I would click in. Okay, let's not go to that level. Let's go to just one to one, should be fine. 
okay. So you can, there's nothing wrong with doing the eyes, right? But not like that other way. So you can go new, right? And you can say, right, what do I want to do with the eyes? I want to maybe increase the saturation a little bit, uh, maybe a bit of texture, which is, if you've done some of the previous webinars with me, you'll know that texture adds contrast around the edges, but it favors the highlights. Go listen to that in the replay and say that three times fast. Okay, so I would then paint this eye. I would also paint this eye. Okay, so there it is. Now I look and say, okay, cool. There is the area, hold it there. Okay, so that's the area. Now, knowing which area I painted, I can now decide what and how. So maybe a little bit of saturation. Actually, the eyes could maybe be a bit darker actually, because there's more texture in there. It looks more balanced, right? And then if I zoom out, now I'm gonna turn all my adjustments off. So that's without brushes, that's with brushes. Without and with. Okay, you could go as far as to have one. Let me do one more for you just as an example. Another new brush. I would then say, right, I'm gonna paint just this tree, just because I can, right? So what do I wanna do with the tree? Uh, in this instance, let's just for visual effect, make it a bit darker and drop the clarity on it and do that, right? Do you see how I'm not stressed about auto masking this? Because I'm gonna fade the adjustment in. So now I've got the tree done. So now I can say, right, what do I wanna do with this thing? Do I wanna make it like that? Do you wanna kind of make it there somewhere? Clarity is going to give it either more sharpness or less sharpness. Yeah. So by doing all of that. So now what you guys must think is you can take any given image that you've done with your general basic panel. Yes. And you can go and divide it into pieces without auto masking it because then they all blend together. The blending kind of blends it together. Right. And you can then work that independently to pull and push your viewer's eye through the frame. It is amazing. Let me take you back one more time just to look at this flow is golden. It is golden. Okay. So if you were to close the brush, right, those pins are gone. Yeah. So if I do anything here now, it does the entire image. Okay. If I go back to that, right. And I've got texture up in this, I've now got four pins. So if I put my pin five, actually, if I hold there, I can see where I work there. If I hold there, I can see where I work there. And those are my individual pieces that I'm working, right? Um, that's just the face and those are just the eyes, right? So those are the individual pieces that you can manipulate. You can turn all on and off over there. Now, here's another little trick for you. Not a trick. I've had people phone the office in a blind panic saying that, Jerry, oh my God, please help. My Lightroom is broken, must I buy a new one? Okay, no, you don't have to buy a new one. It is not that necessary. The only thing that happens sometimes is, increase the finish, you also harden edges. Yes, quite right. Is while you're in the brush and you hit H on your keyboard, watch what happens to the pins, these little gray dots. Let me just get on there. They go away. So if you wanna look at your image without the pins, if it's disturbing you, you can hit H, and you can still see the adjustments, but now the pins aren't in the way before and after. So H hides the pins and H brings them back. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the adjustment brush in a nutshell. It is ridiculously powerful. We're gonna do Q&A now. It is ridiculously powerful. Flow and density is the shit. It is what you wanna use the brush for. Don't worry about trying to stay to the edges. Flow it in, brush over. Use the edge and let it fall off, right? So, yeah, I think that's it. Let's go through Q&A quickly from here. Uh, from the top, Elaine Henry says, when will the webinar from yesterday be available? Okay, I've answered that. It's going to be on Monday morning, live on YouTube. Marcus, uh, thanks for the webinar. Finally made it. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Claire, what's the relationship between flow and density? I think we've covered that. Louis, if you have brushed an area, does changing the flow and density affect the brushed area the same as exposure? No. Flow and density, anything below the line does not affect what you've done already. Only the actual adjustments. Only the actual adjustments uh, does that. Uh, Tracy, can I shed a little bit more light on the cat's face? Can you show us that, for example, very subtle? 
So yeah, so we've done that, yeah. Just brush it in, flow, and then lift it up. So density and flow act like the gears to power in your car, exactly. Francho, what fingers do you use to adjust? So I use these two fingers on my, on my pad up and up, or I just scroll there. I'm not sure I'm getting that. Uh, Marcus, so with flow, you can do more over and over to reach density. What happens when you do more over and over the density? Nothing. So if you have flow and you go over the same place again and again and again, then it builds it up to your maximum density. If you have max density in 91, it won't go further. Okay? Trace, I understand in theory, but I'm not going to put a big stripe in the sky. How can I do this meaningful in an image? Okay, I think we've seen that on the, on the Lima shot. Uh, Peter Pino, does the size of the brush matter? Don't go too small. The smaller you go, the easier it is to see the adjustment because then you have fine lines. Whereas with a big brush, you're going to fade over the whole thing, right? Um, that's good. Do you use the range mask? Maria, that's a little bit advanced for this particular one. I do for some images, uh, specifically the color one, but I'm not going to go there now, Maria. But, but yes, I do. Um, it's a different, deeper setting. We'll, we'll get into future ones on that. Becky, what if you brush too much? in a certain area do you have to delete it or create a new mask or is it possible to back it up you just go and back it up once you've painted just take your adjustment and back it up simple as that um mandeep is density similar to opacity whilst making in photoshop say again is density similar to opacity whilst making for yes so no no so density uh, Opacity in Photoshop is when you've got two pictures on top of each other and you fade the front one out so you can see through to the bottom one. So 50% opacity means you're seeing 50% through this, right? Um, what, 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 what density does? Sorry, my question just jumped here. Kyle, I see your question. Um, what density does, it just basically stops the adjustment. So if you put, for example, if you could put a number, if you could put 100 exposure, you only have 91 exposure, done. The rest doesn't exist anymore. So it's just a buffer as to how much. I leave mine on 90 because it's easier for me to rather add more later than to look at, have it looked over processed, if that makes sense. And can you show us the custom brushes like your Jerry Sharp? Okay, cool. The last one is the following. This is, if you have a brush that you use often, and let's create a sharpening brush. This is how you would do it. Share. Okay. So let's say, for example, I now am done with my image. I think this Lima looks amazing. And now I want to finish it off. So I'm going to say add a new brush, right? Zero it. And now from a sharpness point of view, let me just take you into that level. From a sharpness point of view, ignore the other buttons because each of these has a function. I'm going to say increase sharpness, increase texture, increase clarity. Mental note for yourself. Clarity makes an image slightly darker. So I normally say for every five to seven points that you go up, you need to lift your shadows one or two. So five to one, uh, so it's like a seven. So something like that, right? I might even make it a bit lighter. So let's say, for example, this is my sharpening brush. I still have my flow down. I still got the density down. I am then going to just do this, right? So I'm just painting. So I'm, I'm just brushing the sharp part that I want to be sharp on my image. Turn it on and off, let's just see. Okay, that's pretty cool. What I can do now is I've, I've painted my sharp area, right? Oh, wow, cancel. I've painted the area that I want to look sharp. Okay, and then I can now say, right, let's do we make it harder or lighter. Once I'm happy with the level of sharpness that I've got, what you do is you go to custom, and you go down to the bottom and you say save current setting as a new preset. And here I put Jerry sharp, uh, sharp, sharp brush, whatever, right? Sharp brush and create. So there it is now. So I can then close the brush. I can go to another image. If Lightroom works with me, let's say for example here. And if for whatever reason I wanted to paint these guys, I would go to the D for develop. I would go brush and then I can just go straight here, whatever it was, and I can say, Jerry Sharp brush. It gives me that and I paint them. Let's see if it worked. I just paint them. If I turn the brush off and on, that's your sharpening brush. Okay, so that's pretty simple and it's pretty cool. Okay, guys, that, as they say, is that. Now, I'm gonna give you guys, like I said, in terms of flow, the lower the number means, the higher it means again. So in terms of flow, 
what it means, if your flow is low, then it means you go once over and you're going to go over more times to build up that adjustment. If it's a high flow, you're going to go once and then the whole adjustment's there. Okay, so to wrap this up, like I said, guys, if you have any questions, you can get hold of me on Instagram, uh, send me an email. If you are keen to join the webinar next week, so like I said, this is the first of a series of paid webinars, one a week from next week, every Wednesday, Wednesday webinar, you guys should all be getting an email, but I'm going to share the screen with you. If you want to screen grab it, I want to, can I share links in here? Can I share a link in the chat and you can copy it? If you are keen, it's $20 for next week. It's a two hour session. You're going to get raw files at the end of it to play with. And um, you can then also, uh, I'm going to give you a PDF for the workflow and everything. So I'm going to quickly give you a chance to screenshot, to screenshot this thing, right? Uh, let me just share that with you and go there. This is the webinar that I'm doing next week. It's called the ultimate monochrome workflow. Um, that's what it's about. So if you screenshot it, there's the details and everything. I um, am going to quickly see if I can cut that and I will share this. You know what? You know what? It's live and bookable as it is. If you are keen, send me a DM on Instagram tonight still. And then tomorrow morning before I put this out on newsletter or on social, I will then send you the direct link so you can sign up for it. But if you've screenshotted this, you'll know what it's about. And um, I'm looking forward to this. We're gonna take these things next level. We're gonna take an hour and a half, basically focus on just one image, right? And focus just on one image and work through that. It really is as simple as that. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, tomorrow night, Andrew Dankwitz is doing radial filters and, uh, and the graduated filter, which is similar to this kind of stuff. And I will see you guys next week. We're loading a whole bunch of new ones over the weekend. And I will see you all on the flip side. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening, and good night. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Have a good one.